Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I have some guests coming over later today, and rather than putting a full meal on the table, I thought it would be more fun because we haven't seen each other in a long time and there's a lot of talking, a lot of catching up to do. I thought it would be better to put some little things on the table where they could just pick and choose and not a whole lot, but enough so that I don't have to do a full meal. And these are things that I can cook in advance or prepare in advance and cook at the last minute. Like egg rolls, for example, would be good to prepare. And then when they get here, just throw them in oil. They cook in three minutes. They're very easy. What I want to make here, because I'm starting earlier, is I want to make my Genovese savory pastries. This is one of the most challenging recipes I've ever dealt with. It's not that difficult to make, but the original recipe in the cookbook just had so many problems with it. I had to make this so many times before I got it right. Now that I've got it down, it is fairly easy to make. You start in advance, let things cool as you go along. It's not a fast paced recipe. And you just basically assemble it. There's no raw meat inside, so you don't have to worry about bacteria. You can just wrap them in plastic, set them aside on the kitchen counter. And when the guests are gonna come over, put them in the oven. In 15, 20 minutes, they're hot, ready to eat. So I think it's a very simple thing to do. It's also a very tasty thing to do. I love these Genovese savory pastries. I think they're really good. So let me get into the ingredients that I'm gonna be using for making my little pastries. For my pastries, I'm going to be making my bechamel slash alfredo because I'm putting cheese in it. And I'm using one and a half tablespoons of butter. You can use regular butter, unsalted or clarified. It's all okay. And then one and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour and one and a half cups of milk. And then to season it, I'm going to add about an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg. That's what this is. This is my nutmeg pod in there and my nutmeg grater. I love freshly ground nutmeg, but you can use nutmeg from a, a spice jar if that's what you've got. And then I have one eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper. And then this is a quarter cup of, you can use Parmesan. I'm actually using Romano cheese. And then salt to taste. I'm not gonna put any salt in this because Romano cheese typically has a lot of salt in it. So I'll leave that. For my filling for the pastries, I've got a tablespoon of butter, four ounces of peas. You can use frozen or fresh. These are frozen that are thawed. About three ounces of prosciutto. When you buy prosciutto, it usually comes thinly sliced. See if you can get a big chunk from the deli counter because I'm gonna be cubing this. And you can use the sliced and just cut it up. But I think with by cubing my um, prosciutto, I'm gonna end up with a nicer texture. And then I have five ounces of mozzarella cheese. You can either grate it up coarsely. I don't have a coarse grater, so this is just cubed. And then some salt and pepper to taste. Again, I'm probably not gonna salt this, but I will be using some freshly ground black pepper in it. And then finally for my pastry, I have about three cups of sifted flour here. I prefer to weigh my flour. So this is 14 ounces roughly, which is about 385 grams of all-purpose flour. I've got three eggs here. Two are gonna go into the pastry. Uh, the third egg I'm gonna be using to make an egg wash. So two eggs, one tablespoon of water, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a, a cup of butter. And the butter and the eggs are at room temperature. That'll make sense in a moment. And then finally, the, my third egg is to make an egg wash with a tablespoon, a teaspoon too rather, of water and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'll be using the egg wash to seal the top crust to the bottom crust, and then I'm gonna brush the pastries with egg wash before they go into the oven. So those are the ingredients that I'm using to make my pastries. To make my bechamel here, checking my heat, I'm gonna melt my butter in this little French ceramic saucepan that a dear friend gave me. I love this thing. And then now that it's uh, melted and just starting to sizzle, I'm going to put my flour in and stir that in. And the idea is, here is to make a roux. 
And the idea here is to really cook this flour. I actually want to cook this until the color changes a little bit. Just want to cook this flour a little bit. This is going to take a few minutes. Meanwhile, while I'm waiting for this to cook, I'm going to heat my um, milk up to almost boiling in a separate saucepan. Okay, my bechamel here, my, my bechamel, my roux here has cooled completely, so that's good. And I just brought my milk up here to the boil. I'm going to run a little bit in there first and stir this in. I'm being careful here because I don't want to get any lumps. If I were to put this in, as I said, really hot, I would get major lumps. And that would make a mess. Okay, pour the rest of this in there. And then bring my heat back up again to about medium low. And then I'm going to bring this up to the boil and, and cook this for about 10 minutes. Okay, hopefully you can see that this is boiling. I've reduced my heat to low. I'm going to stir in my white pepper and my nutmeg. That will go in. It just takes, takes some stirring, but that will eventually all blend in. My timer just went off. This has been cooking for 10 minutes. I just turned my heat off. It's still boiling a little bit because, again, this pan retains a lot of heat, this ceramic saucepan. And I would regard this at the, as the coats of, coats of spoon stage. It gets, puts a nice thin coating on my spatula there. I don't want this overly thick. It should be light. And I want to do one thing. I want to taste it. This is my red-handled spoon. I make sure that this spoon does not go in the pan. That's why it's got a red handle on it. Nice. Oh, very nice. Got a nice, delicate flavor. I added no salt to this. I really don't think I need to. Next thing I need to do is let this cool down. This will form a skin on the surface, and the way to stop that is very carefully put some plastic wrap over it and press the plastic wrap down so it just comes into contact with the surface of the liquid, and then that'll protect it from forming a skin. Once this cools down, then I'll be ready to add the Romano cheese. To get my dough started here, I've broken my eggs into a small bowl here. And then I'm going to add my butter and my salt to this. As I mentioned, the eggs and the butter are at room temperature because I want these to break up fairly easily. Put my water in there, then with a whisk, I'm going to break all this up. I want to break this butter up into small beads. Obviously, if the butter was cold from the refrigerator and the eggs were cold from the refrigerator, this wouldn't break up very easily. That goes very quickly. Again, broken up into small beads, and then I'm going to start. I'm going to add this to my flour and get this mixed together. This isn't going to mix together perfectly this way. I will have to knead this. But this will get it started. And what I'm hoping to get, and this is always the challenge with this particular recipe, I'm hoping to get a soft, pliable dough. The recipe that this, the book that this recipe came from, was written by an author who went around Italy 
collecting recipes from family cooks who were willing to share their recipes with her, their secret family recipes. But a lot of the recipes were just basically recited off the top of the head of these cooks from their memory. Anyone who cooks knows you kind of adjust as you go along. But I try to get my recipes as exact as possible so that people can reproduce them exactly. Okay, I'm going to take my rings off here because this is going to be a mess. And put this on the counter and hopefully I can get this to all come together. This is the challenging part. Another issue I have because I have lights on in my kitchen is the kitchen gets pretty warm and therefore the um, dough can get oily if the butter starts to melt. And this is coming together and it feels pretty good. I think this is going to be all right. I'm not going to add any more liquid to this. Gather my crumbs in here. And then just press this together. All right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refrigerate this dough so that it doesn't have a chance to get too oily on me. And then I'll work with my other ingredients to make my filling. I want to cook my peas also. So I'm just melting some butter in my other French ceramic saucepan. That looks good. I have this over to medium heat, but I'm going to reduce this to low in just a minute here, less than a minute. I just want to see this sizzling a little bit. Yeah, that's just starting to sizzle. I'm going to put the lid on, reduce this to low, and set the timer for six minutes. And that'll be fine for my peas. And I'll check that once in a while, I'll give it a little stir, and those will be done. I'm ready to start combining my sauce and filling ingredients. Everything has had a chance to cool. So this is my bechamel. I'm going to add my Romano sauce to that now. Where's my spoon? Ah, here it is. I wanted to wait for this to cool down some before I added this cheese, obviously, because if it was too hot, the cheese would melt. Then everything would get all stringy in there. Okay, these are my peas. These have cooked and cooled. Gonna grate some black pepper in there. And put my chopped prosciutto in there. Mix this up. Get that in there. That's my sauce now, ready to go. Oh, that looks so good. Get this all mixed up. Oh, that looks nice. And then my final step. Put my mozzarella in there. I have one friend that says anything with cheese in it is absolutely delicious. She loves cheese. And that's it. That's combined. It's as simple as that. I mean, you do your cooking in advance, but once everything is cooked and cooled and ready to go, that's all that's required as far as mixing the, the filling ingredients. The next thing to work on, the final thing to work on, is, is 
the um, pastry shells. Here's my dough, and just to show you what I'm filling, I have these little bowls that a friend gave me, and they're like individual single portion size bowls, and they're wonderful little bowls to work with. I'm going to be using these to make my individual little savory pies so that each one is a single serving. So, because I'm working with such a small size, this is only about three, three and a half inches, I don't need to roll my dough into a, with a big 18 inch rolling pin, which is what I have. Just going to pull off a bit of dough here. Just going to roll these with my hands. Just kind of roll this flat. Nothing fancy. Make sure I can lift this. Yeah, that'll come up fine. Okay. And then I'm just going to place this inside of my little pastry dish here and just kind of lift and push this down so that it completely fills the bottom. See what I'm doing? My little bottom shell there. I'm going to get a smaller piece ready for the top. Okay, and then one thing I like to do with this top is I do want to pierce it a little bit in case the filling expands. It's not going to be in the oven long enough to really boil a lot, but I do like to do things to help this to expand. And I do different things with this. I've got this little fluted pastry cutter. I'm going to cut a little X in there. Here is my filling and just spoon some of that in there just enough to fill that up to the top. Usually when I do this I get about 10 and I have 10, 10 bowls to fill so that should be fine. And I have my, I'm just clean it up a little bit. This is that extra egg that I used for making my egg wash. I'm going to, and I mix that with maybe a teaspoon of water and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm going to just press this around the edge or just coat this around the edge rather so that I can make a seal when I put this on top. And then press that down to seal around the edges. And then in my final step here, just going to kind of cut across this edge where I know the handle is, and then just very nicely cut around, right around the edge of that bowl. That scrap. And if you want to, you can do different things as far as designing this little edge. I'm just pressing that down. You can get a fork if you want. And seal that edge. And there you have a nice little pie. I'm going to do this in close-up so you can watch it a little bit better. But that gives you an idea of what I'm doing. I've zoomed in a little bit closer. Hopefully you can better see what I'm doing here. This dough is soft enough that I can pretty 
pretty easily just shake this with my hands. Again, I don't need any kind of a special roller or anything. Okay, here's my bowl. Just press that in and down, trying to even it out around all the edges, and that works just very well. It fits in there very nicely, doesn't make any kind of a mess. Again, drop some filling in there. up that edge a little bit. Shape another piece of dough here to form my top crust. Get something in there. And for this one, I think rather than cutting an X, I'm just going to cut a, a star, a six-sided star, or maybe that's a snowflake. Okay. Set that aside. Work with my egg wash here again to just coat the edges of this shell so that the top crust sticks. Place that on top and just press it around the edges to seal. And again with my knife. Trim it off. Make sure that that's sealed around the edge. And then with a fork, just stitch that outer edge to make sure that it's sealed and it looks nice. And there it is. Another little savory pie. So I have eight more of these to make, and then I'll be ready to bake these in the oven. As far as baking them, all I really need to do is just cook the pie shell. I don't need to cook the insides because that has already been cooked. So 15, 20 minutes should be adequate to get these cooked. As I figured, I got 10 of these. I've got the egg wash here and a pastry brush. So what I'm going to do here is just... Go over these lightly with egg wash. That's a little too thick there. And give these a light coating. Meanwhile, I've been heating my oven to 400 degrees. And I'm going to bake these 15 to 20 minutes. Again, the inside is already cooked, so I'm not really concerned about baking them through. I just want to bake this shell and make sure they're heated up, which they should do fairly quickly. What I did do is I put a piece of parchment paper down on my baking sheet here, and I've already dripped egg onto the sheet. Putting a piece of parchment paper down makes it so much easier to clean up. And these are ready to go into the oven. Again, 400 degrees, 15 to 20 minutes. There they are. I looked at them, checked them after 15 minutes. I thought they could benefit from for about five minutes more. So I, I did do these, bake these for um, 20 minutes. And then, just to get a little more browning on the top, I put them under the broiler for two minutes just to finish the browning. And my next step now is to let these cool a little bit and see how they taste. My little Genovese pastries here have had a chance to cool down some. You can see how easily they just lift right out of these little ceramic cups. There's so much butter in this pastry that 
nothing sticks. I didn't use any non-stick spray or anything inside these little pie plates. Now for the tasting. Mm. 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 The crust tastes delicious. The filling is it's savory. It just tastes so good. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That is really good. I would serve these warm, not cold. They don't have to be super hot because there's mozzarella cheese in there. And the hotter it is, the stringier the mozzarella cheese is gonna cheese is gonna be. So if people are biting, it could leave string. So warm but not super hot. This is the sort of thing, again, you can just put these on the table. People can eat them as much as they want. <clears throat> I think they're fantastic. I love these things. I love these little Genevieve savory pastries. So I'm going to go finish the one that I've started and all the rest are going to go on the table for when my guests get here. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.